Are you ready, Victor? I don't know what's going on. Yes, yes, I'm ready. Oh. Yes, uh -huh. I'm ready. Awesome. Welcome to Choose Your Own Adventure. I am so glad to be here. I'm this presenting to this room is very scary because I'm in a room full of people I respect so much and my peers, and it's so cool. And I appreciate you in advance for thinking of us, me especially, with a kind mind, while I probably talk about projects that you maintain. Uh, so here we go. Meet Hero. Hero is application source code on a developer's laptop. Hero longs to be a real application running in production, serving end users. And we are going to help Hero on their journey today. So our job is to help Hero navigate hundreds of CNCF projects, choose which ones to use, integrate them with one another so Hero can live their dream. Victor and I host a show called You Choose that streams on his DevOps Toolkit YouTube channel. And in that show, every, each episode, we make a system design choice. So for the system design choice, we have invite maintainers or super users of a project to come on. Um, there are probably two to four projects for each system design choice. The maintainers get five minutes to present, only five minutes, and we will cut them off. Don't cut us off today, though. Um, we, we are also very bad at making choices. And the proof of that is that, look at this picture. <laughs> what, what, That's what? obviously not a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> and so they get five minutes to present. And then at the end of the episode, there is a vote. We have a community vote. And whatever technology the company chooses, the, the community chooses, is the one that we implement into our ongoing demo. Now, this is not a popularity contest. The, the one that gets chosen is not at all the best technology. It's simply the one that people want to learn more about. We've also limited the scope to only CNCF tech. So in our first episode, we had a build a, build a container image from the, the, source, the laptop source code. And the winner, not the winner, the chosen technology was build pack. <laughs> <laughs> so our hero leveled up and became a container image. Then there was a, a registry, container registry choice. The community chose Harbor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then, uh, uh, and then our hero leveled up and is now hosted in a container image registry. So now we have four system design choices to make today, and we want your help. There's going to be live voting here. So please scan this QR code so that you can vote today for which technologies. We're going to build these into our live demo. That's what Victor's here for, not just a wallflower, uh, to, <laughs> to our live demo as we go today. So right now you won't see anything. You won't see anything until the poll comes up. So we have four system design choices. We're going to provision a production cluster. We're going to implement GitOps. We're going to add Ingress. And we're going to choose application configuration. So let's get started and help Hero live their dream and frolic in production. So first, we're going to provision a production cluster. Our CNCF choices for this are cross-plane and cluster API. But before we dig in, we're going to talk about cluster provisioning generally. So there's a lot to consider when you think about cluster provisioning. Uh, whether you have your, you're thinking about provisioning cluster in the cloud or on-prem, no matter which bootstrapping tool you use, no matter what, it's going to be super complex. There's a lot to think about. You have to consider node sizes, subnets, VPCs, <laughs> cluster authorization, node groups, roles, policies, security groups, gateways, road tables. <laughs> it goes on and on. So no matter what technology you choose, the complexity is always there. You can't avoid the complexity. So then the question is, what are you considering when you're thinking about cluster provisioning tools? Well, first of all, you want your resources to be declarative. So uh, definitely declarative paradigm, but more specifically, you want it to be declared with Kubernetes resources. So that has a couple of big benefits. One is that you can use the Kubernetes control loop to keep your desired state in sync with your actual state. The other big benefit is that, um, oh gosh, I'm nervous, is, uh, oh, it integrates well with all the other tools in the Kubernetes ecosystem. So for example, DevOps, or excuse me, GitOps and um, observability, say. 
So with that, let's talk about the tools themselves. Cluster API is a focus tool. It does one thing, it provisions clusters, and it does that thing really well. So um, it works well with all different kinds of cloud providers, all different bootstrapping tools. It's a great job. Then we have Crossplane. Crossplane makes it so that you can interact with any a API on the planet via the Kubernetes API. So one very popular use case for this is to provision clusters, but you can use it to do a lot of different things. Crossplane has a couple other benefits. For one is you can off it, it has a way for you to offer a simplified interface. So people who provision clusters don't always need to know about all that complexity. Maybe you have developers that need to provision clusters. And so you can offer a simplified interface so they only see the knobs that are relevant to them. It also has a way for you to compose lots of things together. So you have um, your, you can provision not only a Kubernetes cluster, but maybe it also has attached to a Google Cloud database. And maybe it also has Knative already running in there. And it's all behind one simplified API. So to recap, Cluster API is awesome. It's a focused tool. It provisions clusters. It does an awesome job. Crossplane offers some more stuff on top of that, but if you want to, it also well, it's going to give you extra complexity that you need to mess with. And there it is. Let's have our first vote. What do you choose, Cl cluster API or crossplane? Depending on your choice, I might not have a job tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Victor, they're rooting against you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, rec it's recorded, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Victor. People are struggling. Okay, Victor. Okay. There's no getting around it. Shall we go for cluster API then? Okay. Yes, cluster cool. API it is. Who said that? <laughs> you, um, you put your uh, terminal on the. Yep. yep. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, uh, terminal. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so cluster API, right? Now, uh, the only thing that I actually did in advance. Can you make it bigger? Yes. Thank you. Yes, I can. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the only thing that I did in advance was to actually, uh, you'll see what I did in advance. What, uh, what, what does matter is that uh, I defined this, um, this file here, actually you can now to generate it more or less, that contains uh, everything needed to everything. I mean, everything is, is relatively simple in case of uh, cluster API, all the resources required to define a cluster in AWS, right? No time to explain what each of those does, you can probably guess. What is what? What uh, the kind cluster means, and what is the AWS managed cluster, and so on and so forth, right? So I have resources here, and all I have to do is just say uh, cube cuttle apply, uh, and then uh, na, 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 apply, and the file. Okay, um, is AWS CKS YAML. Now, uh, this is the only time that I'm cheating slightly, right? I already executed this command before, and don't blame me for cheating. Blame AWS, it takes 20 minutes, give or take, uh, <laughs> to create cluster. So kind of uh, blame me for choosing AWS. You can do that, right? How did you know that you were going to I knew that you will, I knew that the audience will try to mess, so mess, mess up with me, kind of like that. That was so obvious, kind of so, yeah. <laughs> A guy from Upbound who works with Crossplane comes and lets you choose, and you're going to choose Crossplane. Of course you're not, kind of like, come on. That, that was such an obvious, obvious thing from my side, right? Um, so production, uh, and if I get all the clusters uh, and uh, AWS, whatever, doesn't matter, all the clusters, for example, you can see that my uh, production cluster is provisioned 16 hours ago, meaning last night after a drink. Um, <laughs> Now, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, and first I'm going to leave you wondering how did I know it's going to be cluster API. Second, um, I'm going to execute this command which just uh, will, which essentially, uh, no, there we go, uh, which will go to the cluster, get the secret, transform it to kubeconfig, all the, all the funny stuff. And uh, I'm going to export kubeconfig. Uh, I'm going to call it prod. And I'm going to prove that the cluster is up and running, get nodes, and there we go. And I can interact with it. I can say create namespace production, right? And uh, then we'll see what else you, you're going to choose. There we go. Cluster All right. Running, cluster API. Cluster API. Will you put the slides back, please? No. 
<laughs> I want to I want to see you talk without slides. <laughs> no? Okay. All right. Uh, so next up, we have GitOps. Our GitOps tools are Argo CD, Flux, and Carvel Cap Controller. Uh, so before we, just like everything, we're going to get some background information about the choice before we dig in on the tools. There are four main rules of GitOps. The first one is that you need to de define your app declaratively. The second one, you need your, your application definition to be version and source controlled. This is almost always done with Git. The third thing, we want our GitOps tool to continually be pulling from Git to get the most uh, fresh version of what's in there. And then finally, we need the desired state to be continuously reconciled with the actual state as was deployed. So this diagram, our application got deployed by the, the GitOps tool, but also it's going to make sure our application stays in the state as it's defined in GitOps and Git, even as we change the Git definitions. So first up, we have Argo CD. Argo CD does GitOps, and it does GitOps really well. The thing that makes Argo CD stand out from the rest is that it has a really great UI. Next up, we have Flux. Flux does GitOps, and it does GitOps really well. The thing, <laughs> the thing that makes Flux stand out, it has um, tighter integration with Helm. And then finally, we have Carvel Cap Controller, which does GitOps, and it does GitOps well. <laughs> the, a couple things set it apart. One is you don't have to give um, root access to your entire GitOps tool. You can do that on a per application basis. And also, it integrates well with the Carvel suite of tools. We're going to see another Carvel tool later in the presentation. So to recap, you cannot go wrong. Every tool does a really good job. Argo CD has a great UI. Flux integrates more tightly with Helm. And Carvel Cap Controller integrates well with the Carvel suite of tools. So what do you choose? Now you can choose any. <laughs> oh, wait. I don't ah. know what <laughs> oh, it's close. Ooh. Oh! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last chance. Three, two, one. Argo CD. Argo CD. Okay. <laughs> um, so Argo CD, right? Um, so I, I have always I, I prepared some scripts uh, to just help me uh, set up, you know, environment variables and stuff like that. Uh, nothing really important. The only thing that matters with scripts, you always answer with yes to any question. You don't have to watch. Look what it is. Right. So I already have prepared here Argo CD uh, Helm values file that contains a couple of Helm chart values. The only really thing that matters here is that I set it to reconcile every 60 seconds instead of you waiting for the default three minutes. So I'm going to, and this is going to be hurtful now, uh, upgrade, dash dash install. I don't know whether I have it in memory. Probably. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to install Argo CD. This will take 30 seconds, give or take. Uh, you're going to hear now a joke about the stick. No, that's the, that's the, that's the answer to the joke. No, <laughs> then it's another joke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have a, a Halloween joke. Oh, I don't know if it's appropriate. Well, I'm going to tell it now. Um, uh, <laughs> why, uh, why don't zombies like to eat ghosts? Because they taste like sheet. <laughs> I love how much you hate Is, is it finished? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <crap. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's finished. Sorry. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, no more. You cannot. Don't do those jokes. They're too. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, for Argo CD, I need to define two things, project and applications, right? Project is essentially all about defining the rights. What will Argo CD have permissions to do in your cluster? Um, I'm, I don't come from security background, so I'm saying everything, right? And then somebody else will correct it later. So kubectl, apply, uh, dash dash file name, Argo CD project. Uh, and I have the project created in my cluster. Now, there are two things I want to install first, which might or might be needed later. Uh, first, I'm going to uh, set up uh, Schema Hero, uh, because the original intention was to show you Schema database, but we will have no time. Uh, so what does matter is that I have Schema Hero files 
uh, defined in this directory schema here in the, I'm currently in a repository, local version of the repository, right? So, um, the second thing I need now is a schema hero file. Now, this is Argo CD application file that essentially, in a nutshell, says, hey, go to this repository, go to this directory, whatever is defined there, that's what you should be have running in a cluster, so you figure out what you want to put that there, I will synchronize it, right? So, what am I going to do? I'm going to say Argo CD uh, schema hero, copy it to, uh, to the infra directory. There we go, right? Uh, and uh, I have another file because I need cert manager for what I'm doing. Uh, and uh, I have that defined as well. Cert manager, which in this case is not going to my repository for specific directories. They're just uh, going to monitor the Helm chart that is defined here. Whatever is defined there is the Helm chart that it will use and it will overwrite a couple of parameters of that Helm chart default values, right? So I'm going to do that as well. Uh, cert manager, I'm going to copy it to the infra directory, right? And I'm, then I'm going to add stuff. I'm going to commit, commit something, and I'm going to push. Now, the last piece that I need for Argo CD to work is uh, the application itself. So this is a app file, apps, that will tell Argo CD two things. First of all, there is this repository over there. And whatever I put in a directory, where is it? Apps. Those with that, that's going to be application of applications, the root for all my applications in my cluster. And the same thing, a repository and directory infra, that's where I'm going to keep the rest of the things that I need in my system, uh, which in this case is schema hero for now insert manager, right? So uh, did I push everything status? Yes, I did. Cool. Now, uh, so I'm going to say, this is the first and the last time I'm going to actually uh, interact directly with my cluster, unless I'm cheating. So I'm going to say, hey, uh, Argo CD apps, there we go, apply this file inside my cluster, right? And from now on, Argo CD is watching and monitoring and doing stuff, and I can do something, get applications in all namespaces, and you will see that right now Argo CD figured out apps and infra directories and inside of infra and file insert manager schema hero and right now it is synchronizing uh, the stuff and if I do namespace, uh, what is the name, schema hero, here we go. Schema hero is running, insert manager is running and now I can, uh, we can come to the application that, no, Ingress, Ingress is next. Ingress you can is now next. use Argo CD to install Ingress and whatever else I might need. Ah, you need slides? Any slides? Yeah, Red. I, I didn't get a chance to change away from the, uh, no, the okay. call, so we did it. <laughs> now, this is a message to you Flux people, right? <laughs> this is a similar story like, uh, uh, <laughs> like you are. You come late. <laughs> right? But it's already too late to change the mind. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So now we have our fresh production cluster set up. We have GitOps implemented, and it's now to, time to implement Ingress. So our choices are Ingress Nginx, we have Contour, we have Emissary Ingress. But just like every single, single thing, we're gonna talk about why do we need Ingress at all? So the, pro, the way things go, once our, once our application's running in production, it's not happy yet because it also wants to serve end users, and that can't happen until we have an Ingress in place. So once we have an ingress and choice, that's gonna be able to let us say what kind of traffic we wanna let into our cluster, where it comes from, what kind of authentication mechanisms, and like a bajillion other things that aren't even listed here. So one thing that's hard for me as a, as a newer learner to get straight about ingress, at first when I learned ingress, I thought it was all about, oh, there's the happy folks. Oh, this is what I wanna say here, the ingress turns around and it configures a networking layer that does the work of actually routing requests to where you want to go. That's one thing I didn't know when I was a new learner. And the other thing is I, I, I uh, thought everything had to do with the native Kubernetes ingress object. And so there's actually some pretty big shortcomings with the native Kubernetes ingress objects. Uh, one of which is um, it doesn't give great status information. It can't easily do these more advanced things unless you add annotations. And then it also doesn't separate concerns well between different uh, personas who want to use the ingress, native ingress in resource. So uh, these, uh, some of these input ingress implementations 
use their project-specific custom resources. In fact, uh, that's just a common way to do it these days. And so not only do you have your project-specific custom resource, you also have different networking layers that are doing the work of actually rooting the request. So when you consider that there are like 30 different projects in the Kubernetes uh, documentation, 30 different Ingress implementations, they all have their own custom resources. They use many different types of networking layers. It is a lot to navigate. And that's why we have the Gateway API specification. And I'm looking right at the Gateway API maintainer while I do this. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> so the Gateway API specification, it's a group of resources that's meant to model the way service networking is done in Kubernetes. And that's all I have time to say about that. So good job, right? <laughs> but anyway, we can help Hero live their dream, but they're not deployed in our cluster yet. Let's go ahead and get an Ingress implemented. So we have Ingress Nginx as our first choice. Ingress Nginx is maintained by Kubernetes and by the Kubernetes project. It does use Kubernetes Ingress objects to, to configure Nginx, which does the actual root work of rooting the request. So it does have some of those problems that I mentioned before. You can add the additional functionality, but you do that during using modules that are in the annotations, which is unstructured data. Next up, we have Contour. Contour uh, supports the native Kubernetes object, but it also has its own object called HTTP proxy. And then it uses um, Envoy to do the networking layer of, of rooting the requests. Um, this HTTP proxy resource, it does have separation of concerns between personas. It, um, you configure your additional things in the spec fields mostly, and it has a status field so you can know what's wrong. Also, TLS cert delegation. And then finally, we have emissary ingress. Um, I believe the docs say that it's an enterprise grade self service Kubernetes native API gateway. And so, ingress, it also uses Envoy as the networking layer, and then it introduces three custom resources. We have a mapping that's developer facing that gets the, the developer can define how they want traffic to get just to their application. We have um, a listener, which configures um, what protocol to listen for and what, ho what uh, port to listen on. And then we have um, a host, where you can do host name with wildcards, and it also supports PLS. And with that, let's vote. Nobody gives a damn about that. Okay. <laughs> I'll try it again. Oh, I think. What's it going to be? Contour. Mm. Okay. Five, four, three, oh! two. One vote. One vote. Oh! One vote. Come on. Oh, you got <laughs> Ingress Ingress. Nginx it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Contour folks are gonna complain. They're they're sitting right next to Flux folks later. <laughs> they're gonna do it. Okay. So uh, what did we say? Ingress Engine next, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. So um, I have defined here Argo CD. Uh, what did I call it? Engine X Ingress, right? This is uh, since we are now using Argo CD, just yet, yet another Argo CD application definition. I'm putting a couple of annotations and uh, essentially telling it, hey, install yourself from this chart and this is the version I want to use. <coughs> so I'm going to take that uh, CP, Argo CD, Nginx, put it into infra directory because that's the directory I'm monitoring inside of this repository. I'm going to add and commit um, and push, right? Now I should have, uh, what is the namespace? Uh, Kubectl, there's just, ah, come on, namespace, ingress nginx, no, ingress nginx, nginx get all, right? Uh, within 60 seconds, give or take, Argo CD next cycle will figure out that there is something pushed to the Git repository and it will start installing, start installing nginx. I'm going to give it, and I, I, I'm not patient. Let's, let's go to the next one and then I'll come back. No, no, I will wait. <laughs> For some other thing that is AWS related directly, it takes horrible amount of time to propagate changes to DNSs. There we go, right? Uh, Nginx is being installed. We're almost there. If I do uh, get services, um, SVC, 
Uh, there we go, right? It created the external load balancer in AWS because that's what I'm using. This is the, this is the address. Now I will use uh, NipIO uh, to uh, generate the domain. And this is the part of DNS waiting until it propagates and generates the IP and all that stuff. Come on. Come on. Okay. Um, not okay. But we'll <laughs> wait. We'll wait. And we'll wait. And we'll wait. And we'll wait. This is like Bart Simpson. And we'll I have another joke. Wait. Why we'll did wait. the monkey fall out of the tree? Because it was dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a genuine smile now this time. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, okay, let's uh, we'll get back to it. We'll get back to the monkey. Uh, to, and uh, wait until I get the IP. We can go to the next choice. Now we need to define our application with application configuration. Our choices are customized, Helm, Carvel YTT, and CD Cates. Uh, back to me and my new beginner, my learner's mind brain. I didn't understand why we needed a technology for this. Like, why don't, what's so hard about it? Why don't we just put it into YAML? So now I'm slightly more seasoned. I can see that there's like application definition itself. There's all the supporting services. There are the, uh, uh, the, the environment variables, the Kubernetes specific stuff, the infrastructure specific stuff. It gets to be a beast. So we need tools to help us manage our application configuration. First up, we have Customize. Customize is built into Kubernetes with the apply-k command. It uses a patching strategy where you have a base manifest, and then the changes that happen between your deploys, you describe those in small patch files. And then once you're ready to deploy, the patch is overlaid onto the base, and then it gets deployed that way. So it's a patching strategy and Customize. Next up is Helm. Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. You've likely interacted with it if you install third-party stuff into your cluster. Um, it uses a templating strategy where the values that are likely to change between deploys are, um, are factored out, and then you have them in a separate values.yaml file. It also adds the dynamic configuration with Go templating. Next, we have Carvel YTT that does both patching and templating within one tool. It also adds those dynamic capabilities with a Pythonic language called Starlark, and you add that in with the YAML comments. So it's YAML all the time. It can always be processed and validated as such. And then finally, we have CD Cates. With CD Cates, you can define your application in any language you want, as long as it's Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, Python, or Go. <laughs> Uh, you can bring your CD Cates library, can have your company best practices, developers bring that into their IDE. They can um, interact with simplified Kubernetes abstractions, seeing only what they need to know. Once they've written the CD Cates code, if do it of a synth command, which will synthesize the code into pure Kubernetes YAML that can be deployed to any cluster. So to recap, customize help, Carvel YTT, CD Cates, what's it gonna be? And while you're choosing, I'm gonna go, going to go back. Uh, Wait. You, to, okay. Oh, I guess they could see the interface. Ah, on, uh, I'm going to your phone not going still, anywhere. You're you choosing it. it uh, export. Uh, now you're putting pressure on me. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, a couple of variables. Class name. Uh, class name is going to be uh, engine X. Engine X, and uh, I need to define the main that I will use for my application, the one that you're choosing right now. Um, and that's going to be Nipayo. Cool. Uh, now you're choosing, right? Continue choosing. All right. Put it back. Oh, do you need that? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Choose it. It looks like, looks like the people have spoken. Helm. Helm. I'm disappointed. Yeah, this is at first. <laughs> um, such an obvious choice. <laughs> such an obvious choice. Okay. All right, three. No, I kind of hope that they're going to change their mind. No. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you a chance. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, let me uh, let me do that. Minus script for the setup. Uh, I define it for all and Helm message. This is the one that you say yes to all the choices. Cool. Now, uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is. Um, Argo CD, uh, what is the name? CNCF demo, Helm, right? I'm going to copy the definition of my application to uh, the apps directory because there's a directory that I'm monitoring. 
cncfdemo.yaml. There we go. Uh, I need to change a couple of things. Uh, wait, echo domain. Uh, this is now a lot of pressure, people. Um, so uh, since it's uh, Helm, I need to change a couple of uh, values in the in the in Argo CD up. I just need to remember which ones I'm changing. Uh, uh, the, 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 the English host is going to be different. Uh, come on, come on, shift A. Uh, come on. There we go. There we go. Up, up, up. Okay. I'm going to call my application silly demo. Silly demo. Demo dot up. And what else? Ingress Nginx is Ingress. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Tag. Where is the tag? Where is the tag? Where is the tag? <laughs> I don't know. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Nobody knows. Who cares? Who cares about tags? Um, okay. So, um, uh, where is my application defined? It's defined here, CNCF demo, right? This is Argo CD uh, repository. It will use a Helm chart defined in this directory, and uh, it will overwrite certain values in that Helm chart. And then if I do git add uh, and git commit and then git push, my application will be defined as Helm chart, is defined as Helm chart, and it will be up and running one time in the future and uh, get all, you will see it up and running here within 60 seconds, and we don't have time for that, so. <laughs> you will never find out whether it worked. <laughs> yes, you will. Now you found out also the schema here doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> but no, it will work eventually. Anyway, my application up and running again, uh, it will be accessible through Ingress, through Nginx, through the domain, where is it? ING here. Uh, uh -huh. Over there. It's up and running. Thank you so much. Woo! Woo! We put the slides back up? No. That's she, she it. Likes, she likes to give you orders. <laughs> This QR code, we have a, a demo. If you wish we made different choices, if you don't really respect your peers' choices and want to make your own, <laughs> you can go to our demo and you can play with all these uh, technologies and choose your own path for hero. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, y'all.